Sir Lewis's move to Ferrari in 2025 has been reverberating around F1 and the wider world since the announcement was made at the beginning of the season. Ferrari's share price rose on the news, while that of Mercedes fell. Sponsors flocked to Ferrari while others fled from Mercedes. The 2024 season is turning into a Sir Lewis appreciation tour, as fans around the world are using the opportunity to show him love, on a scale never before experienced by any Formula One driver. Uh, Lewis, maybe only Silverstone, maybe not even Silverstone, salutes you in this way. The crowd go wild for you. Man, what is this crowd like for you? Oh, it's the best. It's honestly, it's, they've been so supportive for so many years. Um, Team LH China, they've just, they've just been incredible all these years. It's so great to be back. Uh, of course, the British Grand Prix is uh, special and unique as well, but this is uh, just, they just, just always bring such great energy. And um, yeah, and I love this track. I, I really have enjoyed being out. Social media is awash with messages of goodwill for him and criticism for Toto Wolff and Mercedes. The Tifosi and all of Italy are eagerly awaiting his arrival. Several books have already been written about his move to Ferrari. Marketing blurbs referencing the move are being used to sell books about F1 in general. Lewis Hamilton Ferrari memorabilia including shirts and caps are selling out fast. And those that don't have them are using him as clickbait to drive visitors to their online shops. So, it looks like people are scrambling to get on to the Lewis Hamilton Ferrari Express, even those F1 media that love to hate on him. Yes, shameless members of the F1 media that have been steadily inciting and monetizing Lewis Hamilton hatred are now gearing up to monetize his move to Ferrari in 2025. One such media slimeball is Jonathan McAvoy, the Formula One correspondent for, of course, the Daily Mail. This self-proclaimed, biggest Sir Lewis critic is lined up to do his biography in 2025. This sleazebag who loudly and falsely accused Sir Lewis of being a liar and a cheat, and then quietly acknowledges that he is the cleanest driver in F1. Lewis just grabbed me. He knew what he was doing. Yeah, sure. No, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Lewis is one of the cleanest racers out there. There is no way Kevin was just over it. O optimistic. This parasite, who declared that the momentum was with Sir Lewis heading into Abu Dhabi, then led the subsequent gaslighting of the theft of his eighth title, and followed up by deriding him as pitiful, while urging the world to move on from the scandal is scheduled to release a biography incorporating Sir Lewis's slogan, Still I Rise. The slogan symbolizing how he continues to rise, despite the best attempts of people like Jonathan McAvoy and the haters he incites. Why has one of the biggest publishers in the world chosen Sir Lewis's biggest critic to write his biography in 2025? Is it because unauthorized biographies are promoted on the strength of publicity fueled by controversial and unflattering portraits of their subjects? So, I guess we know what to expect from a biography written by Sir Lewis's biggest and most virulent critic, who amongst many examples, acknowledged that Hamilton was a decent human being, because he had witnessed his impromptu interaction with a few youngsters, one of whom was disabled. The fact that these were his opening remarks in an article with a clickbait headline labeling Sir Lewis as a spoilt brat says it all. His reason for concluding that this person that he had found to be a decent human being was in fact a spoilt brat was that Sir Lewis had been curt in his response to a rude question during a post-qualifying press conference at the British Grand Prix in 2014. It is illuminating that he and his editor did not consider that his earlier discovery debunked his unfounded opinion and headline. Perhaps for them, the principle of false equivalence meant that one good observation balanced out one bad opinion. A sample of other critical and abusive Lewis Hamilton clickbait headlines that McAvoy has generated over the years are provided for your attention.
Jonathan, like many of his ilk in the media, routinely generate clickbait headlines to incite and monetize public attacks on Sir Lewis, the biggest name in F1, the most successful, the most popular and the greatest of all time. They minimize his achievements by damning him with faint praise, and promote biased opinion as fact in order to incite public criticism and hatred. Who are they? Well, they include the likes of Martin Brundle, David Coulthard and Andrew Benson. Working for such esteemed purveyors of truthful fact-based journalism, like Sky, BBC and Channel 4, who nevertheless, contrived to propagate one of the most egregious examples of fake news in history, when they all proclaimed that Michael Marcy was entitled to rig the 2021 finale. Why this British men, working for British media, conspired to launder the theft of the record-breaking eighth title from the greatest of all time, who happens to be British is beyond me. And those of you who know, can provide your opinions in the comments section. But what we do know, is that of all the aforementioned F1 experts, Jonathan is the only one who has ever acknowledged Sir Lewis as the greatest of all time. However, he also enjoys the distinction of being Sir Lewis's most virulent critic, which of course accords with his position as the F1 correspondent for the Daily Mail, the most malignant newsfaker of them all. We on our part came to appreciate the depth of Daily Mail's malignancy, because we became aware of the toxic vitriol directed at Meghan Markle, given how frequently she was referenced in Daily Mail articles attacking Sir Lewis. If anyone knows why Daily Mail correspondents and commenters regularly link Sir Lewis and Meghan Markle for joint criticism, please proffer your opinions in the comments section. Jonathan appears to have carved a niche for himself as Sir Lewis's worst critic and biggest praiser. His Twitter header photo is a picture of him training with Sir Lewis probably back in 2009 and as part of a PR drive to improve relations with the press. The fact that he has probably been using this header since he joined Twitter in 2019 shows how important hating on Sir Lewis is to his livelihood. Could this be why he is penciled in for a Lewis Hamilton biography in 2025? Unlike Toto Wolff, Hamilton's German team principal, he ranks Sir Lewis above Michael Schumacher. Unlike David Coulthard, Red Bull's ambassador, he ranks Sir Lewis above Max Verstappen. Unlike Andrew Benson, the weasel, he is openly and strongly critical of Sir Lewis. Unlike Martin Brundle, the cretin, he is willing to sing Sir Lewis's praises glowingly. Perhaps in the warped media world of false equivalents, he is seen as a balanced correspondent when compared to his peers. One thing they all have in common is their shameless monetizing of hatred against Sir Lewis. They all write and speak of him in such a manner as to normalize, justify and enable his hateful and unfounded criticism. However, Jonathan appears to have beaten them all to the punch by reaching a deal to publish a Hamilton biography in late 2025. So, let's see who will be next to follow. If you have any knowledge or information about any of the haters jumping on the Lewis Hamilton Ferrari Express, do let us know in the comments section. Forza Ferrari